In this video I'll show you some really useful tips that will save you a shit ton of time and will dramatically improve your workflow, especially for hard service in Blender. Let's go! Tip number one, custom orientation. And that thing is super useful. So let's say I had a cube here with a rotator. And I wanted to move it along the custom orientation. So GZ, that's a global one, but if you press Z one more time, you're gonna have the local one, right? So, you know, GZZ, and that's a local orientation. Cool. But what if I apply the rotation, right? So control A and apply rotation. Now the rotation you can see here under item is reset to zero, which means there is no local orientation anymore. Local and global is the same, so it's GZ. So now if I press GZZ, that's far cold because the local is the same as global. It was reset to zero, okay? So how can you get this back, right? What you need to do is you need to create a custom orientation based on normal or normals of one of these ob uh, elements of this object. So let's say a face. So I'm gonna grab this face here, go here to this uh, transform orientations and click on this tiny plus. And this will create actually a custom orientation based on the normal of this face. So when I'm gonna go back and press GZ, now you got your orientation back. Okay, next one's gonna be moving an edge outside uh, the parameters of the shape uh, along the normals. It's difficult to explain, but let me show you. So we're going to extrude it on the Z axis and then I'm going to press GY and move it in here. Right? If I wanted to slide this edge down, I can do that with GG and I can use these you know, side edges as a guideline along which it's gonna be sliding. But if I wanted to slide it outside, it's a little bit more problematic. I would probably need to go here and switch it to normal orientation and then do G and uh, whichever X or something. Yeah, there you go. It's too many fucking clicks, right? So what you want to do is, you know, fuck that. What you want to do is you want to start sliding down. So press G, G and start sliding down and then press C. That will revert, kind of, you know, flip the uh, orientation of the slides and you can now slide along the normals up. This is a really cool trick. Okay, another tip is going to be sliding edges. So I just like sliding stuff. What can I say? So shift one to collapse this with machine tools and I'm going to extrude it on X axis and I have an edge, okay? So watch this. If I subdivide this edge, right, so I'm gonna go here and, and right click and subdivide it and I'm going to grab this and shift control B to split it, right? And I'm gonna grab this edge and I want it to extrude it, but extrude it in a way that's gonna create edges in, along, the, along the way, right? It's difficult to do because if I press G, Y, that's going to move these edges with it, right? If I'm going to extrude it, it's gonna create a face, right? So that doesn't work. So what you wanna do instead, you wanna press Alt D. If you wanna press Alt D, it's going to actually extrude the edge and it's gonna create these edges along the, along the way. So this is really cool, for example, for creating pipes. Because now I can scale that, I can select all these points, shift Control b to bevel them, right? And I can do it with hard ups or, or vanilla blender. With hard ups it's super easy because you go to mesh tools and you know curve extract, right? And you're done. And with vanilla blender it's a bit more tricky. You have to go here and convert it to curve, then you have to go here and go to geometry, I think, and increase the depth. It's a lot of fucking steps, right? So you know, get hard ups because life is too short to suffer like that. Tip number four is gonna be resetting uh, lo location, rotation and uh, the scale. So let's say I have a cube here and I don't know, I just moved it somewhere here and rotate it and scale it, okay? Now, what if I wanted to revert, right? Because I can still do that since my transform um, parameters weren't applied yet. So I didn't apply scale, I didn't apply location or rotation. So I can press uh, Alt R, right? Alt G and Alt S. Now, when you apply this, right? So let me just revert it. So I'm gonna scale it, move it here and rotate it. If you apply all these, so, you know, apply all transforms, you, you know, this will not work, right? But there is an add-on called World Align, which basically unbakes all these, so kind of reverts the application of scale, rotation, and, and location. And I think this add-on is still free. So look it up on GitHub, it's called World Align, and it's a fantastic add-on. I think I have a video on that, an ancient video, but if this add-on is still around, it's a fantastic add-on. Okay, tip number five is gonna be Shadow Catcher. That's a really cool one when you are into renders, and you should be into renders because that's the only way to create portfolio, 
and portfolio is the only way to get a fucking job. So, you know, get on with it. So what I want to show you is a really cool trick when you want to, let's say you're rendering something, okay? And you are in render view and I'm going to use material works to create a, a background here. So I can just, you know, turn on the HDRI here and I'm going to add some mats with our add-on because it can't be bothered. I'm going to add plastic here uh, to this one. And let's say I have a camera in here, right? And you know, I don't know, 135, whatever. And I wanted to shoot this cube from, you know, let's say this angle, but I have a problem a bit with the floor because floor is a bit too reflective and let's say, you know, I don't know, reflect some other stuff I don't want to see, maybe some bits and pieces of the environment. Sometimes when you render things, you're going to get this bending effect, especially on surfaces that are very... Uh, plain so there's just one color one value and there's a very gentle transition from one value to another you know like getting lighter and lighter or darker like vignette for example if I, right you will see bending because especially in jpegs because jpegs don't have enough data to cleanly transition from one uh, you know area to another so when you start editing images you might just you know st start seeing bending on on the edges of your image especially in the background so what you want to do, you want to nuke that shit and just replace it. And the way to do that is by using Shadow Catcher. So what it allows you to do is allows you to actually render something, right? Let me just switch this to a top view so you can see it more clearly, right? Boom. There's a shadow here. You see that? Allows you to render an object with a shadow, but without the background. So watch this. I'm going to click here on the background, go here to visibility and turn on Shadow Catcher. You can see the shadow here now. So if I render this, right? It's going to be a transparent render, right, with a shadow, but without a plane. So you can now replace the floor with whatever the fuck you want, or even paint it, and you're going to retain the shadow. That's a really cool trick if you want to create cutouts of your models for creating really nice, clean edits in Photoshop or whatever program you're using. Another really cool trick is aligning. For this one, you're going to need an add-on, but that add-on comes with Blender. It's called Copy Attributes Menu. So go here and enable it, right? check this box and save prefs now whoops now let me show you how it works let's say i have a cube in here and it's rotated and it's somewhere here and i want to create another cube a cylinder or whatever and i wanted to align it to the same you know value as this one normally i would need to do is go here and copy all these um all these uh, angles for each of these axes but there's too much work you simply select this one shift select this one Control c and you can copy rotation Right, you can copy a location. You can also copy modifiers. So watch this. If I have a cube here, and let's say this cube has a bevel, and this cube also has a weighted normals, right? And it's somewhere here and it's rotated. So if I want to create a, a cylinder now and I want to maintain the same bevel and the same modifiers, so I select them both, then press Ctrl C and copy um, rotation. And then press Ctrl C again and copy modifiers, which is here. And Bob Jankel. So there you go. Now all you need to do is actually set auto smooth because in this case it isn't set. So just simply go here and say auto smooth. Now I'm in Blender 4.0. In 4.1 and above, it's going to be a modifier. And Hardop is going to add modifier automatically. So you don't have to copy auto smooth. I just fucking hate 4.1. So I'm working in 4.0. Another tool that's really cool is aligning to a different elements. So let's say I have a cube here and it's rotated. And what I want to do is I wanted to grab this cube, right? And I wanted to align it to the face here. So what you want to do is go here and click on um, face project and also align to target. And then Blender was going to do is going to align this object using origin point to the face of this one. So watch GG for free movement, hold control and just snap it. And now it will actually snap to the face of this object. And then select them both, Control C and copy rotation and Bob's your uncle. Another one is extruding. So let's say you have a cube here or whatever and this face here on top was subdivided, right? So let's say you wanted to extrude this face down. If I'm gonna do it with E, right? You see that I'm gonna have these faces here. I'm gonna have to delete them, which is, you know, a lot of work, right? And I'm gonna have to fix this one to disaster. So what you want to do instead, you want to press Alt-E and then choose Extrude Manifold, which will allow you to do that, which is really cool, right? Another useful trick that you should know, it's very simple, but it's really useful, especially for modeling. 
you want to go here and enable cavity okay cavity is fantastic so cavity what it will allow you to do is going to allow you to see these highlights on edges kind of looks like a small bevel but it really highlights the form it, it helps you to create better shapes because you can actually see the design language if i turn this thing off which is a, a vanilla setting for blender you can see that at certain angles these two edges are barely that this edge between these two faces is is virtually in, invisible it's just gone so it's very difficult to read the shape of your model it kind of looks meh right so what you want to do is you want to go here and turn this shit on and once you do make sure your scene is clean and you can go here and go to defaults and save startup file and next time you're going to open blender this shit's going to be on by default by the way i have a video on how to set up your ui so you can set it up the same way as I do have it set up. So go ahead and watch it and you're going to be good to go. And the last tip I'm going to show you is going to be preview of flip normals. That's really important. So when you model something, occasionally, let's say you're booleaning something, right? It's very possible that uh, your boolean is going to eventually flip some face. So let me just apply that. And I'm going to go here and, you know, I'm going to Alt N and I'm going to flip it. So this face is going to be flipped. You can't see that, but when I'm going to run the bevel, you see I'm going to have this problem. You're going to be like, what the fuck is going on with my mesh? It's even more visible if I'm going to flip this one, right? So watch this. Do you see what I mean? That's very common. Now, the easiest way to set it up to be able to see that is going to be to turn on uh, this option here, which is face orientation. The problem with this one, by default, is that your cube is going to be purple or blue, whatever, and then the flipped face is going to be red. Now, you don't want to see that because there's no point of seeing the correct faces. All you want to see is the red faces. So the way I have it set up here, and by the way, again, I have a UI tool that shows you how to set it up and other things. But what you want to do is you want to go here to themes. You want to go to 3D viewport, scroll down all the way here. And here on the face orientation, you want to slide this alpha to zero. You see, this is what you're seeing, which is fucking psychedelic you want to do is you want to turn this shit down so now once you save prefs so all you need to do now is you know select everything in edit mode alt n and simply recalculate outside and you're good to go okay and now you don't see the blue faces you only see uh, the flipped faces right and that's a really cool way of working so if you're going to for example in the future clip your bevel right slightly like this watch do you see that you immediately see that your bevel is clipping. You don't have to think or check it. It's just you can see that. That's a really cool way of working because occasionally this will happen and you will not notice. And after, you know, you model more, more stuff on it and start adding bevels and, you know, on whatnot and more booleans, it's going to be very difficult to fix this shit. So you want to see it immediately when, you, when you're modeling. And this is the best way to do it. And that's it for the video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.